Hi all, welcome to April's monthly news update from Elios Compliance. Thanks for joining us. We'll start this month with updates from the Latam region. First up, Dominican Republic regulator Indotel has called for a public consultation with a view to modernising its 29-year-old uh, Ley General de Telecomunicaciones 15398. Uh, Indotel state that an update is necessary in order to ensure the com uh, country adapts to changing market conditions and advances in telecommunications technologies. As such, they are preparing in conjunction with the Inter-American Development Bank a proposed Ley de Telecomunicaciones de la Información y las Comunicaciones to replace the existing law. Uh, the link to the public consultation document and the email uh, address to which comments can be sent should be found on the links uh, attached to this video. Comments are being received up until the 31st of May. Also from the region, Mexican regulator Ifatel has recently launched a public consultation on proposed modifications to its conformity assessment procedure. The proposed amendments considered in the consultative process cover the following points. Non-transferability of certificates of conformity, with the amendment proposing that at the request of the approval holder, other parties may make use of this certificate. Samples of equipment submitted to the certification authorities, with the amendment proposing to modify the number of samples presented in each certification scheme, to when except in cases where the technical provisions specifically indicate obligation to submit more than one sample. Increasing the validity of test reports from 60 to 90 days. Changes to the certification scheme sample by product model with surveillance for more than one batch. The amendment proposes that the extension of the certificate of conformity will be subject to document analysis only. And also proposes to include procedures for the certification of used, secondhand, rebuilt and or refurbished of similar products. The announcement Instructions on submitting comments and further details about the proposed changes can be found via the links at the bottom of the video. The consultation runs until the 19th of June. On to the EMEA region now. In Russia, important changes to the MinPromTorg license exemption list have now been adopted, whereby alongside other changes, receive only equipment was added to the list. Going forward, RFC conclusion previously obtained by manufacturers as an aid to solicit their importers in obtaining the MinPromTor license is no longer required for receive only equipment such as car receivers, remote controls, identification, radio frequency tags, and others. The full list of changes introduced can be found in the decision number 18 on amending Annex number 2 of the regulation of the Eurasian Economic Union on the import of electronic devices and high frequency civilian devices, including embedded devices, into the customs territory. You'll find the link as always in the description of the video. In South Africa, the National Regulator for Compulsory Specifications, or NRCS, have finally announced the National Compulsory Specification VC8055 will recognise IEC 62368-1 as equivalent standards IEC 6065 and 6950. Previously, 6368-1 had not been accepted and a declaration of equivalence to 6065 and 6950 was required for all applications using test reports to 62368. The acceptance of 62368 is effective on the 1st of April 2021, meaning that the test reports can now be used to support all safety type approval applications in South Africa. By way of reminder, VC8055 is the national compulsory specification which covers the safety of electrical and electronic products, including the safety of audio-visual products covered by 6065 and information technology equipment covered by 6950. And in Zambia, regulator Zikta have issued new type approval guidelines. Uh, the document available from the links below the video also contains an updated application form, um, applicable reference standards and specific instructions for private and public mobile devices, satellite connections, short range devices and broadcasting equipment. The document replaces the 2015 guidelines. Moving on to the APAC region now, where we have two updates from China. First, SRRC have released a draft regulation covering changes to the requirements for equipment operating on the 2400 to 24835 MHz, 5150 to 5350 MHz, and 5725-5850 frequency bands in China. 
The new regulation introduces several additional requirements for these frequency bands, including the introduction of technical requirements designed to limit interference, as well as several changes to the power and testing limits for Bluetooth and wireless LAN equipment operating on the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands. The regulation also specifies full technical criteria for the equipment operating on these bands. The new regulation is due to come into force on the 1st of January 2022, with equipment which has already been certified before this date needing to conform to the new requirements at the time of renewal. For a copy of the translated version of the regulation, then please get in touch. In addition, SRRC have announced a public consultation into the release of the 76 to 79 gigahertz bands for vehicle radar. Under the public consultation, such equipment would require mandatory type approval from SRRC. The public consultation also proposes the technical parameters for the use of the 76 to 79 gigahertz bands, including the mitigation of radio interference in the band and a peak output power of 55 dBm. For the 76 to 77 gigahertz, a 39 dBm for 77 to 79 gigahertz. The regulation also discusses the future 2.24 gigahertz bands for automotive radar applications in China. For further information, a translated copy of the public consultation or details on how to contribute, please get in touch. That's all from us for this month. Thanks for watching. Uh, please do subscribe to our channel and mailing list. And if you have any questions about this or any of our other videos, then please don't hesitate to get in touch.